Doug Limerick, ABC News. Hello? Is this the party line? Is this your party line? And it's time for all the gossip on your party line. What's going on, fellas? Who, when, and how? We're just listening to your party line now. Hey, hey, TV Radio. Thank you. to the party line this morning from KATE. Daryl Amundsen along with you until about 10. Presented by Hanson Tire Service where uh, they will uh, do that oil change for you, tire rotation, other service work, uh, preventative maintenance schedule. That'd be kind of cool. You know, they, they'll do a free, uh, free alignment check with uh, checking your steering components, the struts, the shocks, the suspension parts. You need tires? Maybe that's why they call them Hanson Tire Service. And... Um, Again, they do all kinds of things to keep you running, keep you rolling, whether it be a vacation, back to work time, or just hiding from uh, from the kids for a while. All right. You can get them down there at 505 East Main Street, 373-0636, if you would like to set up an appointment. So, Hanson Tire Service here in Albert Lake. We have kind of a special party line here this morning, and it's... Uh, it's going to be rather interesting because we're going to kind of split it in two parts. And we got our regular stuff and we got everything. So uh, <clears throat> Doug Limerick may be finished with news for a while. And uh, we'll, we'll just see how things work. We are first off being joined by, uh, do I call you guys members of the uh, Shell Rock Watershed District? or? Uh, yeah, that works just fine, though. That works just fine. Tell you what, go around the go around the horn there and introduce yourselves and what oh, your title if you do have one. All right, my name is Andy Henschel, and I'm the director of field operations. Okay, Andy, nice to have you here. My name is Jared Stricker, and I'm the conservation technician. Okay, Jared, Shed. thank you. I'm Clayton Peterson, I'm the chairman of the board. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, just the three of them apparently. <laughs> Yeah, they just brought her along for something uh, good looking. Okay, so there we go. But uh, it, it's just one of those. Now then, we were discussing uh, with Brent uh, on Tuesday, rain gardens. Yep. And I, I looked at the one down in front of the old uh, conservation building. That's quite a garden. Yeah. I, I, I think I remember when they planted it, and I thought, boy, is that going to survive there? It has flourished. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing how you give a, a rain garden a couple of years and it just it just takes off and you know some of those uh, shrubs and stuff we have in there you know eight foot tall already so yeah yeah I, I didn't think they'd grow that tall yeah um, you know that's that's what we look for is you know we look <laughs> for certain vegetation um, to use up that water during those rainfall events and of course this year um, we don't got no rainfall we had events, no rainfall yeah, events uh -huh. so as a matter of fact I was watching TV news last night in some place they were taking a they were showing what they I assume they were going to pan from this nice green lawn to the reservoir and I expected to see the reservoir dried up but actually I was looking at the reservoir and it, the grass had taken over and it, it looked like a beautiful lawn yep yep you know, the unique things about these rain gardens too Daryl is I don't know most of you guys weren't around when we actually constructed that one but we actually uh -huh. excavated roughly eight feet of clay blue clay out of there and I thought that was kind of rough yeah. soil down there. it was rough like, soil. it's a it was a very rough site for a rain garden uh -huh. um, but so what we had to do is excavate eight feet of uh, hard blue clay and actually put in sand. So it, it's okay. almost like a big sink. Um, so sort of you, water did, you, did you mix the clay with the sand as, as a base and then cover it with better? Or nope, we actually we removed the topsoil. Okay. Uh, removed the clay, uh, put in the sand, and then put some topsoil okay. back on top. All right. So interesting. I wonder when the last time was that was all underwater. Um, probably last fall, sometime. Last fall? Okay. Probably. Not this year. <laughs> yeah, not this year. It, it's, 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 uh, although we did have three whole hundredths of an inch of rain yesterday. Oof, duh. that'll help. Yeah, I don't know where we're going to put it all. <laughs> I was just wondering because I'm going to take you back a little bit. People say that you should always kind of remember the past. And I remember some, talking with a couple of the, uh, pardon the, the phrase, old timers. But they were telling me about one time here at the Freeborn County Fair when it rained so hard 
the midway flooded out. They had cars stuck all over in the parking lots, and uh, there just happened to be a, a sideshow with elephants here at the time. And they were using the elephants to pull the, the vehicles that were stuck in the parking lot out. And I have yet, I've talked to four or five people that have told me the same story, but none of them can pinpoint which year that was. They, they can't, re and I, I can understand that because I don't remember years either anymore. It's just when you're having fair, you're having fun. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's, it's one of those things that uh, has happened before. Rain barrels. I know uh, we were talking about those as well, and then we'll get on to... Uh, I, I take it you guys have got a couple of other topics we're going to take on. Whatever topics you want to talk about, Daryl. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to be stuck. Okay, but uh, rain barrels. A yep. um, couple years ago, was I think the first time you presented them at the fair, and people were kind of looking like, well, what do we need a rain barrel for? We've got a hose. We've, yeah, we've got this, we've got that. Now, all of a sudden, people are really thinking these rain barrels is a great idea. It is a great idea. And, you know, the way we look at it as a, a watershed district is, you know, every, you know, we try to control every drop. And if we sit there and, and look at, of course, not this year again, but if we look at years past where we get large uh, amounts of rain and watch our lakes just bounce, um, that bounce is really tough on our lakes and, uh -huh. and the ecosystem within the lakes. Um, so what we were looking at is we're just we're trying to promote rain barrel rain barrels and water um, uh, conservation basically. Yeah. And we figure you know if we had even let's just say 600 houses in Albert Lee at 55 okay. gallons per barrel, um, that's quite a bit of water. I mean I can't okay. do the math in my head, Daryl, but I can't either. Don't <laughs> don't look at me with uh, on math. Clayton but, might be able to. You're, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Clayton. Uh, just <laughs> Fourteen hundred and thirty thousand gallons. <laughs> Fourteen hundred and thirty thousand gallons. But you know, okay. if we can, if we can, if we can stress water conservation um, and get okay. more of those rain barrels out there, um, we feel well, like it's a good thing. I think it makes great sense because you've already got people complaining about how high their water bill is, and it just amazes me the number of people with sprinkler systems and water, and they go out and. and even when right after it's rained, they're out there. It's like it's like it's addictive to be watering your lawn when the rain barrels, you know, would take care of your garden. There, what we tried to how many gallons in one of those barrels? Fifty-five gallons. Fifty-five. Okay, we were trying to just figure that out the other day, and uh, we came up with somewhere around thirty-five. But it is fifty-five. Yeah, fifty-five. And the unique thing with these is you can actually connect them together. So you could put uh, okay. you know, two barrels together and then have a hundred oh, sure gallons, could. or you can connect three of them. For, okay. I mean, it's because I'd imagine there's a, a a release at the bottom, so you could yep. connect those two together. Yep. And then there's an overflow, um, and the hoses actually come with the barrels to connect it to another barrel, so you could have multiple barrels. My gosh, we could do a little uh, water boot like a. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> sell sell bottles of rainwater. Hey, I like that idea. Yeah, so, and, and the other thing that we tried to show down there, um, you know, last year we had the truckload sale um, that we partnered with the uh -huh. the Cedar River Watershed District. Um, How'd that go? Um, kind of disappointing. Um, we didn't sell as many as we thought we would, and we sort of had a competition with uh, the Cedar, and they won. So that was sort of disappointing, but... Uh, well, yeah, but they get floods over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Half of their rain barrels will probably floated down the Cedar, so... <laughs> yeah, they're somewhere in Iowa now. All right. But no, what we, what we try to do is uh, bring different types of rain barrels, too. You know, some people want the more decorative one. Um, so we used to have one that was like a... It was an old uh, wine barrel, whiskey barrel. Um, yeah. down there. So there's all types of different rain barrels out there too. It's just how much you want to spend for one. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yep. I thought these, because I think they're tan now? Yep, they're tan. Um, okay. And they have a little sticker on it. Um, Were they at one time blue? Yes, we had blue. Blue, were, blue uh, seems to stick out in my mind. Yeah, those were our homemade ones that uh, us staff um, made ourselves. So. Really? Yep. yep. Okay, so you're going to get into that. You're selling, you're selling, <laughs> selling uh, rain barrels. Are they are they that difficult to make? 
Um, if you wanted to make your own, um, probably the biggest thing is trying to find somewhere to find, or trying to find the barrel itself, and okay. you know, trying to um, figure out where to get uh, the barrel. But as far as the conversion, what do you think, Jared? Jared put most of them together. Yeah, yeah. Really? They're they're fairly cheap to make as long as you get the barrel for free. So maybe okay. uh, fifteen to twenty dollars, and you'd have one as long as you get the barrel. Okay. So what what would you do with that barrel? Well, you have to drill out the for the spigot and okay. then, uh, for the overflow, and you actually have to put a screen on the top so the water can get into it somehow too. Uh huh. Um, now, having done a couple of projects like that, yeah, much easier to buy it from you guys yeah, <laughs> than, to, than to start over several times and keep looking for a barrel. Yeah, these are nice and professional looking too. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever made a barrel? No. Okay, I was watching some program on, t you know, there's nothing on TV. I've got, I've got cable. I've got 182 channels with nothing to watch. So I just stumbled across this place where they were actually putting together barrels, where they showed how the, how the staves fit together, and then they, they put the, uh, the ring around, and, and then they tested them to make sure they held. Well, that was fascinating. Uh, they did that on dir dirty jobs on Discovery Channel. Okay, that that wasn't the one because I know Mike Rowe. This was, I think, on How Do They Do That, I think the program's okay. called. And it looked like, well, you're watching an expert do it. This guy could do it in his sleep. It looked pretty easy to do. And uh, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. We used to have rain barrels all over. We try to find, find, the, find the pre molded plastic ones. So okay. It's a little bit easier to put together. Yeah, but the pre molded plastic is, <laughs> you know, everything's plastic. Yeah. I've uh, I've got one at my house, and you know the thing I like the most about it is what? Uh, it's got it's got a black screen on the top, and it must be what five uh, inches by five inches. Okay. And what's nice what what's nice is there's no sunlight that gets into that barrel, so you don't have the mold and the mm -hmm. algae starting to grow. And then I don't I from what I can tell that screen's small enough so you don't get mosquitoes in there, so they're not breeding. The, um, okay. Here, so. That was that was my next question. What are you going to do? Because we're told to make sure we dump. Well, this year we haven't had to worry too much about dumping water out of out of receptacles around your property, right. where mosquitoes would breed. And the screen obviously is fine enough. Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, right now mine. Is, my uh, barrel is full. Um, because we've had, you know, a half inch here and an inch there. And okay. There's been enough roof in order to fill it. But uh, we just, we, you know, use it for our flowers and stuff. Sure. And, uh, but it just goes down and it's, it's dark inside there and, and uh, you don't have the mosquito issue. So. All right. Gee, another issue just popped. What do you do in the winter with them? Well, you obviously want to drain them out so they don't. Okay, get all I, I was hoping you'd say that. And break the faucet or whatever. And, uh huh. I don't know. I think most people just leave them as is, and maybe they okay. take them into their garage for the winter. Okay, maybe you could put roll them in the snow and make a snowman. Sure. Yeah, that's the nice thing about them, though, Daryl, is they're they're pretty you know much maintenance free. I mean, you can yeah. just empty them out and then leave the spigot open during the winter time, and then nothing will freeze inside, and okay. you're good to go. So. Just remember to close it when springtime comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll get some rain in the spring. Well, maybe maybe the fall. Who knows? It is really dry. Absolutely. So with the people that have these rain barrels, have you heard any uh, good comments, bad comments? Uh, Every comment that I've heard is, has been really good. Um, okay. you know, a lot of people will actually come in and buy one, and they've actually come in and bought multiple um, barrels after that. So, um, now is that a good idea? I mean, if you if you have just a, a moderate sized garden with you know a flower bed in the front and maybe a few tomato plants or something in in a tire or so, do, do you really need, uh, need more than one? To, to, to take care of the situation because the grass can go. I mean, you know. Yeah, it all depends deal. on how low you want that utility bill. Well, how do I make that <laughs> heat my house? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, it all depends on the situation you have. Um, okay. Most people, they have, you know, larger flower gardens that they're using it for, or larger gardens. Uh, uh -huh. but yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the size of your garden. Okay. Because some people have expansive gardens, and I would imagine they could pr they could position uh, rain barrels uh, every so f so uh, you know if it goes around their yard, maybe in the corners of the yard. And I'll tell you what, Darrell, my wife has over 242 varieties of hostas, 
So oh, all your four frame barrels really work good. <laughs> Hostas. She's a hosta fanatic. Okay. I am just the opposite. <laughs> if I'm going to plan something, you better show me some results, not just sit there. <laughs> Low maintenance, though. Yeah. Believe me, I've had a fight with trying to get rid of some stuff, but <laughs> it's, win that. it's winning. <laughs> it's winning. So, rain bear, I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The more we can, the more we can get out there, the the better off we are. So. Okay. Yes, when we're conserving, we're doing much better. And yeah, why not? The stuff falls, we can use it. Well, if you think about it too, when you live in town, um, you know, if you're using that water to the, to water your gardens, you got chlorine and fluoride okay. in it. Um, this is just all natural rainwater, 100%. Uh, now I'm going to ask. I'm good at coming up with the dumb questions. There's no dumb question there. No, okay. There's smart answers, but no dumb <laughs> question. Okay. 55 gallon barrel. The way it rains is how does it collect enough to fill up that 55 gallons? Um, pretty do, you, do you have a great big <laughs> funnel that you go out and put in the barrel at, at rain time? or? Well, the, the way they work is you put them, usually you put them right underneath your rain spout. The downspout. The downspout. So, you mean I'll have to clean those things out? Uh, once in a while, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's what the, the good thing about having the screen there is, too, is it will filter all the debris that comes through there also. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it really don't take much of a rain to fill up one of those 55-gallon rain barrels. Really? No. I've seen, especially out here at the fairgrounds, and uh -huh. we only have the front uh, portion of that old conservation building with a gutter on it and half of the sides and i remember watching one we filled one up in like 20 minutes out here with a, a well it was a pretty good downpour that day but okay. it don't take much rain to fill them up all right that's interesting and if you would like to know more about the rain barrels go on uh, down to the conservation building yes i work with these all the time <laughs> There's, there's just uh, there's just not enough room on these tables when you get everything where you want it so you can just go ha ah, ha you know like that all right so anyway you have the uh, barrels down there available yep and you can well you know if you hit enough of those great big bottles of pop from the Lions Club you could probably put them in the barrel and carry them home that way there you go it's much easier than one at a time we actually are giving one away per day at the fair. So yes, I know. Go down there and sign so up. So all you have to do is sign up. And how do you notify the people? We give them a call. Okay, you don't have to be present then. Oh, it is announced on the P. Okay. At 5 o'clock. All right. So if you're out here this morning and uh, would like to sign up, take your chance of getting a, a rain barrel, hey, that's, that's a great prize. No doubt about how much are they just by just out of curiosity. Sixty-four dollars and forty-three cents. Sixty-four dollars and forty-three cents. And when you consider what it's going to do to your water bill, or the amount of water you'll probably save, that's a pretty cheap uh, cheap investment. Yeah, and the nice thing about um, this is we bought them in bulk, um, so it's a, quite a reduced rate. I mean, if you go online okay. right now, most rain barrels are running anywhere from a hundred to one hundred fifty dollars. So. It's uh, wow. quite a savings, too, just in the rain barrel. Itself. For a rain barrel? Yep. Okay. That's a pretty good markup on some places. <laughs> okay. So, what other projects have we got going around the area? Um, well, one of the interesting things um, that came out of uh, a meeting on Wednesday is we, the district, um, went back to the Lassard Sands Outdoor Heritage Fund, which is the statewide sales tax. Okay. Um, and went to them for two other grants. Um, one for a new dam on Elberly Lake and okay. a fish barrier to keep out the new um, invasive carp. The new invasive species. Yeah, the new okay. invasive silver and uh, big head. And we also did the uh, barrier, electric barrier on okay. uh, Goose Lake, which is... Now, how old is that dam that's down there? Oh... From the 1800s? At first, the first, the original dam. I think, I believe this one that's down there is 1920, per se. Okay. In age. Because I remember that uh, that dam being there forever. We used to go down there and go fishing. Yep. And, uh, wow. No that's spots you fall through. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a 
happen if that dam were to go? Would that be bye-bye Albert Lee Lake? Yeah, well, it wouldn't be totally bye-bye, but uh, you would probably see, uh, probably right now you want, you would see probably another 12 to 16 inches of water um, lower uh, than what it is now. Okay, yeah, so you wouldn't have to worry about drowning. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could walk across it. And at that point, you'd be stuck in, in whatever's there. Daryl, are you old enough to remember we're driving a Model T across it? Because it used to be the old county road. Yeah, I, know, I remember when it was the county road because if two cars ever wanted to meet, you, if you were fishing off the bridge, you had to... <laughs> hurry up and duck down? No, you had to hurry up and get to the end of the bridge and uh, step by and let them through. No, but the interesting thing is we put in a grant for that and a barrier on Goose Lake, and we actually made it by the first cut, so come September. Really? Yep, come September okay. uh, 5th, or no, excuse me, 6th and 7th, we actually will have to go back to St. Paul and testify on our projects and okay. hopefully get some uh, the funding to, to do both those projects. So um, real fun stuff right now. Okay. I've often wondered this. So we're going to ask the engineer. <laughs> no, I'm no engineer. I don't want to be an engineer. Who's the engineer? <laughs> we hire that out. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe Jared could... Uh, oh, no. Oh, no? We have to work with the engineers. You have to work with it. Yeah. How do you build a dam where there's already a dam? Um, basically what you do is you go in there and you construct a coffer dam in front of it. Okay. Um, then you take the old one out and put the new one in. Okay. So. I, w I just wondered. You yep. know, it seemed foolish pouring cement into water. It just uh, <laughs> Temporary dam. A temporary dam. Yep. All right. It's going to be interesting to see. Will, it, will that raise the lake any or could it raise the lake any? You know, we've tried and, and talked about that for uh, quite a few years, okay. uh, but the DNR is pretty much um, a big stickler when it comes to increasing lake levels. Um, it's actually never been done um, in the state of Minnesota where you actually applied for a new dam and actually were able to raise lake levels. So, All right. Albert Lee Lake yes. was dredged at one time, correct? Just the channel. Just the channel. All right. So we have absolutely no idea what else could be out there yeah there could be a lot of hidden treasures out there There could yeah that, that's my point because if it's uh let's face it, it it's been mis mistreated for a long time and it's finally started to look good it, re it really you know you can see the difference on a yearly basis and uh, what exactly are we doing for that um, right now, um, the unfortunate thing is we were working with the Corps of Engineers um, on a tool, what was called a 206 Ecosystem Restoration Grant. And okay. that grant would have looked at a lot of uh, different projects, uh -huh. um, including shoreline restoration, um, uh, limited dredging, and dredging some uh, okay. spots out there for fish and fish habitat, um, and included uh, the new dam. Um, so it, it incorporated a bunch of uh, different projects, and this this grant was actually applied for back in 2001. We brought it back up. They finally had funding for us um, in 2010, and now they're telling me now they don't have no funding anymore. So we're looking at about 2015 before they okay. might have any other funding. So we're actually moving forward with some other of our own projects as far as planning. Um, All right. And really, you know, looking at that dredging component, um, you know, the Corps of Engineers, one of the last things they did is um, did a lot of sediment borings out there. Okay. Um, basically telling you what surprises you might have out there as far as yeah. you know, heavy metal, stuff like that. And the good thing that came out of that is we didn't have anything that was considered hot or a tier three, which, um, you know, is not good for us. So. Okay, but there still could be a few surprises. There could always be a few surprises. Okay. Some refrigerators or... A couple cars. A couple of cars or a safe full of money or... <laughs> a locomotive. A locomotive, yeah. I've heard that story. I've heard, I've heard that story, too. And... Well, I know... I know it's it's true because I know the person that did it, but I'm not going to say who. <laughs> but uh, somebody walked across. They were so bored one sun, summer afternoon, they walked across. They took their time and just felt, and they never got wet above the knees. Hey, Daryl. Uh, yes. I've got Kurt on the line if you have a moment. Uh, we'll get to him in just a minute. Okie dokie. And uh, it, it's... Uh, 
One of those things, if you, if he swears that he did not get wet above the knees. And he forgot the way. So he had to walk all the way around. <laughs> back but uh, you know it's, it's just one obviously the lake has improved a lot since then which has been 30 years maybe 40 years ago and uh, you, you see more and more you see boats mm -hmm. you see well obviously the pelican breeze is out there you see uh, you're, you're beginning to see fishermen yep. and uh, that, that's a that's a great sign for that lake yeah, I mean, it's very exciting for us as a district to to look at the improvements that we see from year to year and then looking at the benefits of people using the lake. And, and uh -huh. that's what's, to me, rewarding. And I think, you know, Jared and Clayton would agree is, okay. you know, there's a lot more for us to do, but uh, it's fun to, to see that reward and people start using okay. it. I got one more real quickie here, which is, is a rumor, or actually I think it was a, I think it was a, prediction that we would see Fountain Lake and Albert Lee Lake connected by more than just the channel you, know, you could just be able you'd be able to float your boat uh, from one lake to the other <laughs> yeah I don't think you could do that without a series of locks and dams yeah Daryl you give me about uh, 15 million dollars and we'll see what we can do for you oh I, th I don't want it oh. <laughs> I just think it's ridiculous we've got two beautiful lakes why toy with them like that yeah, I mean, just... Uh, and, and there, you know, Fountain Lake is getting better. Albert Lee Lake is obviously well on the way to, to, to mending, and it, it's perfect. It's, it's beautiful. It's drawing back the pelicans. They're, they're coming back in bigger numbers than ever. Obviously, the fishing has got to be good out there because the fisher, fishermen uh, keep going back. And I know I was once upon a time trying to get my two kids out of there. <laughs> I wanted to go home, and they were kept fishing. And I was trying to talk to one. The other one just was playing, dipping his line in the uh, in the water. And up comes a northern. Sorry, I don't take things off the hook. So, <laughs> so we had to go find something. Uh, you know, so it's it's obviously well on the mend, and that's a good sign. Yeah, and you know it, it takes everybody uh, a community effort to do this, and I think it's been a, a, a huge success. And um, the only thing I don't want to forget though is we got a lot of work to do, guys. So. Yeah. Well, by gosh, it looks like you guys are uh, the entire watershed district, and and uh, all the vol. I take it you have a lot of volunteers and members uh, doing yeah, we, their job. Yep, absolutely. We had, uh, but not so much as we used to. We used to have a lot uh, doing a lot of monitoring, water monitoring for us. Okay. Um, as far as volunteers. Um, but yeah, we still have, uh, you know, some different boards that are volunteer um, basis and, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay. a, a fun, fun project. Absolutely. Well, we are uh, pretty well stoved out of time here. <laughs> But I'd like to thank you guys for, for stopping in and uh, telling us a little bit. Once again, don't forget to register for the Rain Barrel down by the uh, conservation building, the brand new conservation building that you're going to look at. And, or, or, or the Chamber of Commerce. But okay, yeah, we, we can't forget Tammy and the crew over there. All right. Yeah, that, they're right in front of the uh, Fairlane building. So there you go. Register. Who knows? You might be lucky. Ta-da. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you. All right. A little bit of uh, some information from uh, the uh, Shell Rock.